Hello, everyone. There we go. Now we have sound. All right. And now we take care of that. All righty. Welcome back, everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed my two-week vacation. Um, my camera looks a little cockeyed. Hold on. better. Yes, that looks much better. Um, so yes, took a little break in there, did some visiting with the grandkids, played around a little bit, and now we're right back into this. Um, bench pillows for all seasons. We've almost got all 12 made at some point in time. Um, I've got to look to verify, but I think the June one was my first video. Um, but I don't think I posted it. Um, I think I recorded it and didn't like it and didn't know how to do live yet and was still experimenting with all this fun stuff I have. Um, but so we'll, I'm going to look into that and verify and see if we need to make the June one again. July's bench pillow for all seasons I liked. It, it turned out really nice. Um, I used uh, jelly roll with red, white, and blue stripes, or red, white, and blue fabric, and it turned out just fine. I know that there are others that I did not like as I went through this series, so I'm fairly confident you will see some of these pop up again. Um, probably won't do all of them, but, but I will throw in some other ones because if I don't like them, I'm not going to use them. Well, and I know for a fact, I think it was November's. I threw in the garbage can. Um, you watched me do it on video because um, it was just, it was atrocious. I didn't even finish it. So I know for a fact we will be redoing one for November because I didn't have one this year. So this month is May. Well, we're in April. So I'm making May's pillow cover. And it is a actually very simple design. Um, yeah, you're probably a night nice, yeah. It's a border, a background, and a bunch of applique. So the design is, is simple. Something they do here is they've got, um, what are they called? Now I can, yo-yos, yo-yos, um, as the flowers, and the leaves kind of pop out also. Um, I'm not very good at hand stitching. In all honesty, it's just not something I've ever been very good with. Um, so we will have to look and see how that all comes out. I get water all over the place. Um, we're going to have to see how that all comes out. I ha currently have three two-hour stints scheduled to do this in. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to get it done in those three two-hour stints. Because like I said, I've not done, sorry, technology. There we go. I don't know why it closes. I still don't know. Even after the two-week break, you would have thought I would have looked into it. No, I, I didn't. <laughs> um, but so needless to say, we're going to go through and make this. And if we do need a fourth part because of all the handwork, we'll have to we'll have to get there when we get there. But so the first thing we need is a half a yard of white with dots. So that is what they are using as the center the main background. I'm going to switch to that camera there and give you, nah, it's not going to work very well, is it? There we go. Wrong way. Always do it the wrong way. There we go. All right. So that is the white dot fabric that they're talking about. I am going to use an off-white stripe. So a tan stripe. Um, I don't have anything that looks like that and I actually think I'm going to like this with the brown. Um, it's going to be darker. My whole pillow cover is going to be darker than theirs is going to be because all of the fabrics I'm using are slightly darker. Um, so it's all going to be a little bit darker. But I said, I like this fabric. I think it's going to look nice, so I'm going to use that as my main fabric. 
Then the next thing it calls for is a third of a yard of pink floral. That's for the border. Last month in April, when I was working on something, I found this. And I decided that I was going to use this for this month's border. So that's what I'm going to do. It has red, yellow, and blue flowers, and then the green. So it is a floral, but it's not pink. And I'm okay with that, again, because I'm not necessarily going for the whole... I, I, I get the red thing. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but that's what I'm going to use there. Then it says a fat eighth of brown tonal. And I assume there is, there are two little birdies looking out like a window chirping. And the brown tonal, or fat eighth of brown tonal, is for the outside of that. I am going to go and use my brown that looks like wood because it doesn't really look like a tree it doesn't have any tree holes in it it looks more like a wall but i'm going to use that so like it's a bird house so the little birds are in a bird house and i'm going to use this as that fabric so i'm going with that one then it says scrap light brown taupe dark rose assorted greens gold tonal and assorted pink and yellow tonals that is for the tree branch Tree branch I'm going to do in brown. I don't have a, I only have this solid brown. I don't have any browns that have like a, well, like this. The green here, see how it's kind of faded in some spots? I don't have any brown like that. So I'm just going to use solid brown as my branch. Then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yo-yos that are going to be flowers. And those, of course, can be any color you want. And I'm thinking I'm going to throw some blue in there because I do have some little pieces of dark. I've got dark blue. I've got blue with flowers and pink on it. That probably won't work for a yo-yo, but... Um, then I've got some light blue. So I'm thinking some of that blue for the, uh, for some of the flowers. But I'm not certain. This is where my problem runs in. They have the mama bird and the two little birds as red. And I don't think I want red. I'm thinking I want them to possibly be blue. And I might make, like, the mama bird a light blue and the little birds the darker blues or vice versa. So I'm leaning towards the blues being the birds. Even though I have blue flowers in my border, I think I'm going to stick with the blues for the birds. And then I have, I feel like I'm missing some yellow here. I have lots of different pinks and yellows. I even grabbed a little bit of a purple, depending upon what my mood is. Um, so lots and lots of different pinks. And the yellows here, I actually have fat quarters of. So there's different patterns of yellows for all of that. And then, last but certainly not least, the leaves. Um, this is what I've been using, I think, for most of the year um, as leaves. I don't remember exactly when I bought this, but it was a jelly roll, and it's all this solid yellow or yellowish green. It's green, but it's got a yellow base to it. So using, I've been using that a lot for leaves. And then I've got this scrap of dark green. This green is actually what I typically use for a quilt back. It's 120 inch fabric, so it's just a scrap from that. So I'm going to use that for some of the leaves and this for some of the leaves. All right, and then what does it say next? Then it says um, backing for pillow front. So that's where we go into our 
muslin. I don't know why I have both pieces here, but I know I have one cut from last month because with this muslin, when I cut it, I get two months worth of back. And nobody ever sees this because it's on the inside of the pillow. So I just use muslin. There's no reason to use a good fabric. Just use the nice, easy to get a hold of stuff. Uh, batting is over there. I'm not going to mess with it right now. Um, the rectangles for the pillow back. So what I'm going to use for the pillow back is I'm going to use this same floral print. So the border on the front and the envelope pieces on the back are going to be the same fabric. So that's all going to blend together. I've never done that before. In any of these pillows, I've always done something different. Um, so I'm going to see how that turns out for this particular pillow and what they think of it. All right, the next thing it says is scrap nine two inch by three and a half inch scraps of batting. And as you know, I do a lot of quilting, so I have a lot of batting and I've got a lot of pieces wandering around. So we're just going to grab pieces of batting for wherever. Three black, three sixteenth diameter buttons. So this is for the eyes for the birds. And I don't have anything that is three sixteenths of an inch. I've got these listed as a half inch. There are some that are smaller in here. Um, so we'll just find whatever buttons. If I do use the blue, I'm not, as the bird, I'm not certain I'm going to like having black eyes. So we're going to have to see how that turns out because I've got something else. One of the other months I did something where I changed up the color of the fabric and the button for the eye just never really appeared for me. So I didn't like it all that much. A small 30 millimeter yo-yo maker. Um, I don't know if I have a 30 millimeter yo-yo maker. And even if I do, I'm not even certain if I know how to use it. Let's see, there's a pom-pom maker. That's a big yo-yo maker. This says it's a small flower yo-yo maker, but the plastic is not here. So let's see here. This is 45 millimeter yo-yo, 60 millimeter yo-yo, a puff maker, another puff maker. I'm assuming those pieces go there because they look like they should. And let's see, what's this? Is this my 35 millimeter? This might be it. And it looks like I tried to make it something with it at one point in time. So we'll have fun. I'm thinking that's the one that goes with that. Love these things. Plenty of pom-pom makers. I can make pom-poms. I have gadgets. All right. Put those all back. It's my gadget section. Put that up there. What's this one? <laughs> 30 millimeter yo-yo maker. Never been touched, never been opened. Instruction manual included. So we get to play together. See, live TV, or TV, this isn't TV, live videos, whatever. All right, fusible web with paper release. We have that over there. We'll get to it if we need it. Template material, yep, threads to match and black. Threads to match and black, that's weird. I would think black would be one of the colors to match, but hey. And then basic sewing tools and supplies. We've got all that. And let's see. So the first thing we need is a 12 and a half inch by 30 and a half inch rectangle. That's going to be the main section of the quilt. And I'm assuming we don't, yeah. So it, we're not going to attach the, the border until later on. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make all the stuff on the inside. So let's go there first. 
So we need a 12 and a half inch by 30 and a half inch rectangle out of our back fabric, which is going to be this yellowish, goldish, I'm not certain what color to call it. And as we've done in the past, I don't, I mean, it's wide enough to cut 30 and a half. It is 30 and a half, right? But my cutting board is only 24. So we're going to fold it in half and we're going to cut it halfway. There we go. Now, here's our edge. We're going to snip about an inch, about an inch in on the salvage. And then we're going to tear the fabric. And that's wide enough that I'll use for feeder fabric later on. And now I'm going to measure 12, I'm going to give it 13 inches because I want to be able to trim it off at the end. Because I can get the 30 and a half lengthwise. So I'll worry about that then. Line up my torn edge. be able to get to our iron here. So let's get this fabric up here so you can, yep, still all there. That's our stack of fabric that we're going to be using. That because we're going to need our iron. Excellent. All right. So straight edge along the edge of my table, which is where my zero on my, because I've got a tape measure taped to my table. I'm going to 13 inches, a little snip, and a tear. All right. Windy outside, making some noise. All right, let's see here. There we are. And set that off to the side because I will probably find that I need it at some point because I screw something up. So we're not putting it far, we're not going to put it away, we're just going to set it off to the side. So why did I tear the fabric? I tore the fabric because fabric is made up of a bunch of strings all weaved together. You know that. It's a basic thing that you're, yeah. So when the fabric is put onto the Uh, thing that it gets wrapped around that my brain is not remembering right now. Uh, spool, bolt, bolt, not bolt, spool, bolt. It doesn't always get put on there with the grain as straight. So as you can see, these two torn edges don't match up. And in order for a garment or a quilt or anything to hang correctly, you need to make sure that these pieces of thread are right next to each other when you cut it. So that means we're going to need to iron, we're going to need to press this fabric so that it goes to the correct 
way so that the, the threads are all straight. Because right now, if we were to cut it right now using the fold that was on the top here, that's not going to work. It's going to mess it up. It's not going to be straight of grain. And things just are going to get out of whack. Um, with these particular things, with these pillows, it's not as noticeable, but it is. Um, there was one that I did where I, I didn't mess with. I was using uh, fat quarters instead of full fabric for something on the edges. And they're a little wonky. And as they're sitting next to each other, somebody sits and puts their back against the pillow. Um, when they move back up, you can see that this fabric kind of goes that way and this one kind of goes that way. It doesn't, it doesn't all line up straight, which is why we want straight of grain so that everything lines up right and looks nice. So let's get this fabric pressed. Okay, my water bottle is not on my table. Where is my water bottle? Did I move it? It does not appear to have been moved by me. But I don't know how anyone could have gotten in there. There's not a lot of space to walk around. Hmm, interesting. Let me go find another water bottle. I'll be right back. Odd, but I found it. All right, found it. Because I have more than one of them up here, but and I went to go get the second one where I knew where it was. This one was out in the hallway where it should not have been. All right, pure uh, filtered water, nothing complicated. Um, you do not want. You want to try and avoid using. Um, unfiltered water depending on where you live. Here in the central Florida area we have pretty bad water um, in general. So filtered water is the way to go. And if you'd prefer to use starch, go for it. I mean I have starch and starch alternatives back here. Um, when it comes to the initial starting of just getting it lined up, with the straight of grain, I prefer to not use stuff like that. I prefer to just use a little bit of water because the starches do actually have some chance to change the direction of the threads. Um, and then they're not straight anymore. They can be set to be not straight. Water, a little bit of it is a much better idea just so that it doesn't train your fabric to do something you don't want it to do. The water is loosening up the threads. The water is making it easier for it to, to be pressed. That is what it does. That's why we're using it. Um, but it's not quite as severe as using starches or I've got best press starch alternative. I can't remember what they're all called. So now we're going to match up the threads so that it is straight on grain. It doesn't have to match on the salvage. That doesn't matter. The salvage doesn't matter. Where the fold was doesn't matter. What matters is the threads along the torn edges match up with each other. That's where you're, what you're going for. That's the important part. And I 
after you get one side done, you want to make sure that it's the same on the other side and that these are all matched up also. Because both torn edges should be completely straight all the way down. So now we have, let's see, can I get you to switch views a little bit, let's see. That's a little bit better, but you're not in focus, are you? No, you are not in focus. That's better. Okay, so our fold is over here, and we need this to be 30 and 1 half inches wide. Since I've got it folded in half, that means I need 30.5, 30 and a half, divided by 2, 2, so that I can get half of it. So that's 15 and 1 quarter inches. And let's see. That's going to be right at the tippy top. So double rulers. I'm going to start with one on this side. And I'm going to go to 15 and 1 quarter inches and put that right on the fold. Make sure it's straight all the way along the fold. I'm going to take my other ruler. I'm going to butt it up against it so that we have, we're using two rulers here. This one's going to go away. Open up my rotary cutter. And there we go. Put this with the other piece. And because I have a ruler down here, I'm going to measure this from the edge of the table on my ruler. And you can't see it because it's too wide. So two, 30 and a half inches on my tape measure. So we are happy. We have it the correct distance or width. Now we need to make it 12 and a half inches wide. First thing I'm going to do is trim off this edge. Again, lining up on the folded edge and this time making sure it's also lined up on the top cut edge. Because we know this is straight, we just cut it. And we want it to be on both sides. So keeping it even, making sure it's straight. Up we go. And it needs to be 12 and a half inches wide. So again, 12 and a half. Oops, wrong ruler. 12 and a half inches, lining it up on the cut edge. And take the bigger ruler and butt it up so that it's even. Make sure the fabric's flat. Okay, now we have a rectangle that is on grain and square. Well, squared up at the corners. Get rid of this seam in the middle. So we don't need it anymore. Mm, 
Mm -hmm. There we go. And to the design wall it goes. There we go. So we've got the first piece of fabric. It says to cut the um, border strips. Sorry, sidetracked. Um, from the floral, and I'm trying to think. I need two and a half inches by two and a half inches. Oh, the sides are wider. I got a fly in the house. All right. Um, so that would be five. 16 plus 16 is 32. 33. So a four and a half. So I need nine and a half inches wide. So I'm going to go with 10. And this fabric is already torn on one edge, so I don't have to mess with tearing it again. And the ruler's out of the way. So I need 10 inches. And remember, you don't have to be as exact with this because we're just tearing the fabric to keep the grain straight, and we will worry about actually cutting it later. So if it's not exactly 10 inches, don't freak out. It's not going to hurt anything. This is simply for to make sure we have enough fabric to get our four borders out of it. All right. Used fabric goes over there. Oh, nope, that's going to be used later because that's on my back. I forgot. I forgot that was my back also. Okay. Fold it up. Line it up. a little stubborn here. So we will have to convince it to do what I want. I'm using a little more than I usually do, but I hope but it's it's a it's a nice quality fabric, which is part of the problem. <laughs> it's a problem and it's not it's a problem because the fabric is is when it's a better quality, it's a little heavier, a little thicker, it's got a little more oomph to it. Um, but that also means that it's more challenging to get the folds out of where it was pressed before. Um, all right. Now I'm going to go over here. I'm actually going to stand on the side. Let me get you set up. There we go. That way my long I can use my long ruler. Trim this first, lining up. Oh, don't want to be blurry. Come on, you can do this. Come on, silly camera. There we go. All right. So I line up on the fold, making sure I'm straight, and I'm just going to trim off the edge here of the torn piece of fabric, because I don't want that on my pieces. Okay. 
Okay. Now, I don't need to use two rulers this time. This time I can just use this ruler. So I'm going to turn my fabric around. And I'm going to go in four and a half inches. Because one of the borders, or two of the borders are four and a half inches wide. So I line up my four and a half inch on my cut edge, which is now over here. I line up my four and a half inches. And I trim. And these are going to be my two side borders. So we'll cut them again in a minute. But first, I need 30 and a half inches again from the fold. So let's do this this way. We're going to be turning this a lot here, apparently. All right. So 30 and a half was 15, I had to use this one, 15 and a quarter from the edge. Line up. Now I've got cut edges that I can use to line up also. So line up on the cut edge, square it off with the folded edge, and we're at 15 and a quarter, which is 30 and a half, divided by two. Make sure this ruler is also lined up. And now we have extra fabric for later. And this fabric now needs to be cut into two, two and a half inch strips for the top and border, top and bottom border. So two and a half. And two and a half. This is too skinny to use as starter fabric. I mean, it really isn't, but probably is. So I'm just throwing that away. And now our four and a half inch borders need to be 16 and a half inches long. Well, let's see here. If I Make sure it's 16 and a half. We've got at least 16 and a half. Yes, 22. I thought we did. How'd you get blurry again? All right. So to make this work, we're going to cut off the fold. So just like we've been trimming off the edges that are torn, we're going to do the same idea here. We're going to take. We're just going to trim off the fold because we don't need that. And then we need it to be 16 and a half inches long. So two rulers, line it up at 16 and a half down here. Make sure it's all along the edge and the ruler follows along the edge. And I moved it, so let's shift it, make sure everything is straight. There we go. So we got the one ruler going this way, 16 and a half inches. This one's here. Extra fabric for possibly later. Our rulers get set aside. Let's go out here. All right, so our two and a half inch strips are going to go on the top and on the bottom. They are the exact same width as the fabric we're going to be pairing it up with. So they're exactly 30 and a half inches. They're going to match up perfectly. The 16 and a half inches by 4 and a half inches are going to go on either side.
keep in mind, when you're doing this, you're looking at it and you're like, but those aren't going to be long enough for these. We're going to get rid of a half an inch here. One quarter inch on the border, one quarter inch on the center section. Those two added together is a half an inch. So that's going to go away. The same thing's going to happen down here. So if we lose a half an inch here and we lose a half an inch here, that means we're losing an entire inch once we sew these pieces of fabric together. So keep that in mind. It may look a little weird right now, but it will make sense in the end. All right, then it says to make circles if you're not using a yo-yo maker. I'm going to use a yo-yo maker because why not? I have one. I've just never used it. All right, so now we need the appliques, which is why if you want to make these, you need to buy the book at anniescatalog.com because the templates are here. I guess if you are really creative and can do this by hand, you can do it. I am not. I am not that creative. I need patterns. I need things to tell me what to do and how to do them. That makes me happy. But let's see here. Um, I'm looking for May is for mothers. That's got Christmas on it, so I'm guessing that one's the later in the now. Let's see. May is for mothers. There we go. So I need the long and short branch. So this is going to take some work. Preview. Okay. Here we go. That heat and bond. This stuff works on one side, sticks on one side, and then um, but it doesn't have, it's got sticky stuff on the other side, but it's got paper on it. So you want to make sure you draw on the right side. So this side, I can feel it is rough. This side is smooth. It feels like paper. So that's what I want. And you just sort of lay it over the top of what you're tracing and it'll be right there. All right, let's see here. There's my pencil. There's my pencil sharpener. So I try and use the least amount of this as I can. So I pop things around a lot trying to figure out the best way to put it on the paper so that I use the least amount of this stuff as I can. Just because I'm cheapskate and I don't want to waste it. This is the short branch, right? Short branch. So I write inside short branch. And I'm actually going to put the color on here today. I don't always do that. Brown. That way I don't forget which goes where. Now this one is going to be different because I have to match this piece to that piece. They put, they broke up the pattern into two spots. So I have to make sure that I have room for that branch to stick out. So let's go back down here where we started with that one. I don't think that's going to have enough space. We're going to have to go out a little bit. All right. Now we're going to match this up to this.
and draw. This is long branch and brown. Again, fly is flying around. Please forgive me. It's gonna drive me crazy. Next thing I need is light brown for the nest. So the light nest is going to be the brown that I'm using for for the strips, but actually now I'm looking at something. If you didn't realize there were two pieces to the nest. One's the inside, one's the outside. All right. So, oops. I read the directions, that doesn't mean that I was paying enough attention to realize. It said nest, I just went with nest. Um, so this is the nest interior. We're gonna need two different colors, one for the interior, one for the exterior. I'll have to figure that one out. So color, is a question mark. Then the exterior is this one. This I know I'm gonna use that brown that looks like wood, that looks like somebody built them a bird, bird house. Not just a nest, an actual bird house. call this nest just nest nest and that's going to be um, wood planks all right one mother bird where's the mother bird ah. may is for mothers mother bird bird. And one mother bird, two wings. There's the wing. There's I need two of these. Now both of these are going to go on to the mother bird also. One upper baby bird and one lower baby bird. Let's see. May is for mothers. There we go. They're over here. Down here.
So this is the lower baby bird. This one. is the upper baby bird. And then three beaks. Um, April. May is for mother's beak. There it is. Three of them. And I am going to have to find my gold for my beaks. I know it's around here somewhere. Because I used it last month for April's beaks. There's beak. One. And beak three. All right, back out to here. So I'm looking around trying to figure out where my gold went. Let's see. Is it up there. Yeah, there is some. This will be enough. This will be enough. I know I have more somewhere else, but. This will make three beaks without a problem. Wasn't paying attention to the directions, I guess. I thought I had everything set out, but I was wrong. All right. Scissors. They say paper on them. You may not be able to see that from there, but they do say paper. There's one over there that says fabric, and there's another pair over here that say fabric. rolled back up. Put back into its little package for use during our next project. I don't remember what June looks like. I'm fairly confident I made it. I really am. I thought I made it, and that was the first video I did. But it didn't work out, and I didn't post it. Let's see. Actually, I don't think I did make it. Because it's got a bumblebee on it. I don't remember making it. I might have started in June making the July pillow cover. So that might have been the first one I made. Okay, now we have all this drawn on our heat and bond, and we don't want to cut on the lines yet. You don't want to cut on the lines. You want to trim them out so that they are going to be able to go on fabric depending on where you want it. So the nest interior is going to be one color. The nest exterior is going to be another fabric. Right. Mother bird. And then the wings are both going to be the same as the mother bird. There 
your branch. So those are going to go together. Let's get the other branch out of the way. And the two birds, two baby birds, and our beaks. Let's start with the beak. Beak is easy. So I have three beaks drawn on this fabric, or on this paper. I'm going to take it over here to my iron. So I'm going to press. Now, if my fabric that I'm using has a right side and a wrong side, so like this has an, a right side and this is the wrong side. The, the back side is the wrong side. You want to put the heat and bond on the wrong side. That way you get your pieces so that they met when you cut them out they'll they'll flip over and the right side will be facing up. I can tell you I have done it where I have put it on the wrong side of the fabric on the which is the right side of the fabric to say. Um, I, I have done it in the past if you do it, don't be embarrassed by it. It happens. All right, so there's the beaks. Now, the exterior of the birdhouse is going to be that. Hmm. So I know that. Wood plank. There we go. I guess I could make the inside of the birdhouse look like it was painted or something. Um, or I could just use the solid brown that I'm using for the tree branches. All right. And again, we do not cut up to the line yet. We just cut the fabric around the heat and bond. that we can use that, trim that up later on. If you really want to cut them all out individually, go for it. Um, at this stage of the game, I prefer to have them a little bit bigger so that they're easier to use. But your call as to how you want to do that. We may have a kitty cat visiting. I'm not certain. She's jumped up to look out the window. I'm just not certain if she's going to head over to us or not. All right, that's just a piece of scrap. Um, I'll get the brown. And do the... It didn't tell me to cut out the leaves, and I know I'm going to need leaves later on. Why didn't it tell me to do that? Did it tell me later on that I just didn't remember? Yes, there's a whole page on how to do what's called padded applique and making yo-yos. I'm going to guess we're going to stop at a certain point today because that, well, that may have to be a whole show all by itself. All right, let's see. Birds are over there. I need to do... Needs anything really wide. I'll kind of sort of be there. Is 
This is really long fabric. Yeah, I think this is 60 inch fabric. That's, that's a long fabric. Probably because it feels more like a lining. More like a lining fabric for the inside of a purse or well, even a jacket or something like that. All right, let's see here. Let's get our branches. branches I think I will use this dark brown for the interior and I am gonna make the baby birds out of the light blue that way they'll stand out Maybe I'll use the light pink and have the bird be pink instead of blue. And then do some of the blue for some of the, the flowers. I don't know. We'll think about it some more as we go. What I'll probably do is make a bunch of yo-yo flowers out of a bunch of different colors and then decide which ones I like where. But I think if I use the pink the light pink for the birds, for the baby birds, it'll ref it'll bounce off of this dark, because it, it calls for taupe to be the interior color, and that's a darker color. And they, but they've got a dark, deep red for the light for the baby birds. And I'm not, I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. All right, there's that. So I need to decide on the mama bird and the baby birds. Let's see. Move that out of the way. And the yellow. Okay, so here's all my blues and my pinks. I can also make the wings of the mama bird a different color blue than the mama bird herself is. Because it's my quilt, and I can do anything I want. All right. So against this is going to be the interior nest. So what color do I like best? I like the purple, but can't use the purple. Purple doesn't make sense for a bird. Blue bird does make sense. That does stand out pretty good. Let's let's pull in the camera. All right. Here's. Here's what we're going to use for the interior nest. And we're going to have two little birds sitting against it. So I've got the light blue. That will pop. Definitely will pop. I have the dark blue. I don't like that. I don't like the flower blue 
for a bird. I think that's just silly. Um, you know what I could do? I could make one blue bird and one pink bird. Now I say that I don't know if birds, I, I thought birds were all the same color, so I have to pick, that's my thing, I have to pick the same color for all three birds in my mind's eye. I feel like I have to. Um, let's see, will the mother bird fit on this blue? Barely, but yes. Sorry, sound heard something out front. So I could make the mother bird a really dark blue. And then make the baby birds the light blue. I'm gonna do that. All right, let's see here. Now, my heat and bond goes over the edge of my charm square here a little bit. So I'm gonna have to play. If you have heat and bond and it goes over the fabric you're pressing on, it's gonna stick to your ironing board cover. So trim, you have to trim. Remember, don't cut all the way to the line because we're going to have to do that later on when we actually cut the bird out of the fabric or whatever applique you're using. In this case, it's a bird. Mother bird. So the two baby birds, I'm going to do the same fabric. So I'm going to leave them together and put them on this other charm square, which again, I have to trim just a bit so that they fit. Now, Mama Bird's wings. Should I make them the same dark blue as her? Or should I make them the same light blue as the babies? This is going over here for my blue scrap pile in case you couldn't figure that out. All right. Do I do the same color? Do I do a different color? Hmm. I'm going to go with the same color. So the dark blue, oh, that's pretty. This is slightly different fabric. I'm gonna go with this one. Right. 
Now we have all of our appliques set. I'm going to get these rulers out of the way for the time being. I'm not going to need them for a while. Let's put them away. There we go. Okay, so now we need to cut out our, or put our appliques onto the big rectangle in the center. And the first thing it says is that the end of the long branch should be seven and a half inches up from the right bottom edge of the big rectangle. All right, so I need the long branch first. I'm cutting this a little wonky because normally I like to have the line I'm cutting on, oh, excuse me, to my left. Um, I've got it to my right because of the, we're going to come up into a spot here that's hard to cut. And I'm going to have to meet, cut from the other side to meet it. So I'm just going to go there, and now I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to be with the line on my right, which is what I prefer. Long branch is cut. And now we're going to need our rectangle. And it says the bottom of it, or does it just say? Place the end of the long branch seven and a half inches up from the right edge. Okay, so it doesn't tell me whether it wants the top to be seven and a half inches or the bottom. So it doesn't give me, it's not giving me that much information. So seven and a half inches. And I am gonna put the bottom of the branch there. This pen is a Frixon and it, when you heat it up, it goes away, disappears. So I, mark, I put a mark at seven and a half inches. And now I'm going to peel the paper off of my heat and bond. If you're using steam -a seam it will actually stick at this point. Um, once you, steam -a seam once you peel the paper, like I'm doing now, Feeling the paper, um, the fabric will actually stick to the other fabric, and um, so you can position it and stick it, and you can put it back up on the design wall if you want, and put some other things up there. Um, heat and bond doesn't do that. I, I, that's one of the thing. That's the only thing I don't like about heat and bond is the fact that it doesn't have the ability to let me put things on and then lift them up and put them on and lift them up and, and move things around. Um, once you put the heat and bond applique on, it's on there. So you're done. You want to make sure you're happy with it. 
All right. Place the nest at the other end of the branch, overlapping a quarter of an inch. So the nest is my wood plank fabric. So they're calling this a nest, I'm calling it a house. And now I have a dilemma. Do I put the planks going this way or this way? Let me go look at the computer real fast. Come with me. Well, you can't video come with me, but you can hear me talk. Let me come out here. And let me look and see. Let me look up the picture, a uh, picture of uh, Google. Picture of a bird house. Bird house. Um, pictures. Looks like most of them go up and down. From what I can tell, most of them go up and down. Um, let me see here. Let's see here. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with up and down. Because it just looks like all of them out there go up and down. All right. So now we're going to take our birdhouse. And we're going to have the planks go up and down, because that's what it looks like most of them on the internet look like. And I'm going to place this, maybe, all right, overlapping the branch by a quarter of an inch. Seems a little lower. And I'm not using a ruler. I'm not messing with making sure it's exactly a quarter of an inch. I'm also not making sure that the um, lines are absolutely straight up and down. I'm just sort of I'm letting it letting it go that way. There we go. Keeping that where it needs to go. Then after I do that, slip the short branch one quarter inch under the edge of the nest on the other side. All right. So now we need the short branch. And I have no idea why I'm cutting with the line on the left when I just got done telling you I prefer it on the right. And for some reason, I wasn't pay paying attention to myself. There we go. all of this away now. And you. Right. 
Now I want the branch to look like it's coming straight across, so I need to try and eyeball it. If you are very particular, you can get something out and measure it and make sure it's exactly, but I'm, I'm okay with eyeballing it. All right, so those three pieces are now on here. Um, had I been using heat or fuse, steam a seam too, um, we could have had it up there and you could have seen what I was doing to place it and everything else. As it stands, you just get to see it when it's done. So just like when we did putting the paper on this fabric, putting fabric to fabric, we heat it up, we press it, you uh, putting it now, since we have our pieces placed where we want them to be, don't push your iron around. Make sure you pick it up and move it. Otherwise, the pieces will move and you may not be happy with where they end up. And you'll have to start over again because getting them separated is not something that you want to even attempt. So make sure that when you do this, you lift and move. Um, we are going to be putting other things on here, so I'm not as concerned that everything is absolutely secure. I'm, I'm getting as close as I can. Um, but if something isn't completely on stuck to the fabric right now, we're going to have another chance, another few chances, because we still got to put the birds on, uh, the, the other nest, and so on and so forth. All right. Tape measure we don't need anymore. Let me show you how this turned out. All right, so this is how we turned out. I think the branch looks pretty good, like the, this is sitting. It's supposed to be a bird's nest. Um, I've kind of made it look like you're looking into a bird house. You're not seeing the whole house, you're just seeing the inside of it with some peripheral vision. <laughs> However you want to imagine that. Um, that's where we went, that's where I went with it. That's how I decided to do it. Um, all right, next step. Center the nest interior and place the two baby birds inside as shown. Now we at time wise. Okay. So once we get these applique on, we are going to be calling it a day um, because the next step involves doing all the blanket stitch. And we, why well, start it today just to finish it tomorrow? We'll go ahead and get it done. All right. So the nest interior. Two baby birds. Sorry, car slowed down by my house. I don't like it when they, oh, but this one's going around something, so obviously I can't see something that's happening outside.
And I'm going to need two beaks, one for each of the baby birds. One and big two. I am using fairly large scissors to do this. Um, using the smaller clipper scissors might have made more sense. I just wasn't thinking to change the scissors. There's that. We need to take this back down. And I'm going to pull the book over because I'm not fully understanding how these birds are going to sit in this nest quite right. So the interior is oval shaped. It's not a circle. It's a, it, the, the nest area is a circle. Um, this area is an oval, and it's got the birds sitting. So it's going, the oval kind of is elongated at an angle, so that the birds are sitting, the baby birds are in there and are chirping out. Come on. You're separated, I can see it. There we go. All right. So kind of centerish, but off a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, this is the upper baby bird. This is the lower baby bird, and it looks like the lower one is behind the upper one. So I'm going to stick that a little bit behind, and that all fits around the circle. Well, there we go. Let's see. Yep. Now a couple of beaks. Beak one, and then beak two. Again, very particular about where I was placing things, so when you do that, you don't want to iron. You want to press. And we're letting it heat up. And there we 
we go. Now you can see where the baby birds are. Baby birds are in the nest. And mama bird's going to be over here. So, mama bird. Again, when you start getting into this detailed cutting, feel free to use a smaller pair of scissors if you have them available to you. Because it can be challenging. Now it says the mother bird should be two inches from the nest. And she's going to have feet that come off of her. So two inches from the nest. And I don't want to go too tall because we're going to stitch some feet on her. The wing in, one wing tucked under the top of the body and the other on the top with the point side pointed up. All right. So mama bird about right. Those are her, where her feet are going to be. So that's going to be right about there. We want one wing tucked in the back. How far down the back? Sorry, need the book again. All right, so this one is like that. And this one, ah, I need to take the paper off. It's not going to do me any good if the paper's not off. I'm going to get them all put where I want them, and then I'm going to have to pick them all up to take the paper off, which is what exactly what I had to do. Forget the beak. All right, let's see. 
Mama Bird. There's Mama Bird. One wing in the back, kind of there. And one wing on the front, kind of going there. Is that too low? That's too low. There we go. And her beak. Tuck it underneath. And press. Now, I, can you see that? That's that's coming off, so we're going to press over here. Remember I told you we're going to have multiple opportunities to press? Because I figured that some stuff would cool off and re I'd realize that it's not actually as caught as it should be. Here we go. What do you think? I think that's going to work. The yellow isn't standing out on her beak at all on this the fabric I chose, the background. But I think once we put a border around it, a blanket stitch around it, we'll be fine. All right, so as I said, this is where we're going to pause for today. Part two, we're going to start with, we're going to be doing all the blanket stitch. So there's not a ton of it, but there's probably an hour's worth of blanket stitch on that. Um, I'm probably just going to use black, I think. I think I've, I've been debating it in my head as I've been doing this, thinking, do I want to switch between the blues and the golds and the browns, you know, the greens, the stuff that I have. I think I'm going to go with all of this that I have here is all going to get a black blanket stitch. Um, what we are going to do next that I am going to read up on is how to make the leaves and um, the yo-yos for the flowers. Um, but after we do the blanket stitch on all of this, then we attach the borders and then we move on to making the leaves and the flowers to put all over the place on here. Now the leaves I will use my dark green thread, um, so that'll be fine. Um, and I'm not certain how to do the flowers. Again, looks like hand sewing, so not something I typically do as a general rule, but we'll have to play it by ear, figure out how to use that thing. Um, and that'll be, so we probably are going to, well, I don't know. We're probably going to need a fourth part just so that part two, which is the next one, is going to be the blanket stitch and putting on the, the borders. Part three will be doing all the leaves and the flowers, the yo-yos and the padded applique, all of that. And then part four will be quilting and then putting on the envelope and finishing it. That usually takes, doing the, the quilting and the um, making the envelopes has typically taken me about an hour and a half. Um, so we'll get that done that way. And I will see you all in part two. Have a great day. Thank you.